December 3rd because my best friend has returned. Wow, wow best friend. Yeah. Is that an upgrade? No, you've always been so important to me. <laughs> so yeah. I have food in my teeth. I just walked in from dinner. Um, I did pull a story for you today. You did? What is it? It's really sweet. It's about a 99-year-old golfer. Oh, I like old golfers. Because you're going to be someday. one. I know. <laughs> I'm quickly getting to that point. No. Shot a 78 this weekend. It's is pretty good. Is a 78-year-old man? That sounds like an awful <laughs> experience. <laughs> no, I shot 78 on the golf course. Oh. But it and was man, funny. That was a gun night. reference. I was joking. It was a joke. Oh, I see. Like, I shot a 78. Oh, a man? But I'm bum. No, I get it. Oh. Hi, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Guess who I had up here? Martin. Director Martin. Oh, why? <laughs> Don't say it like that. I had him up here because um, there was a the Pokemon conference story. And, <laughs> and you know, he plays card games with people we know in this building. You're over that person, though, aren't you? Is it over? Yes. Mr. X? Yes. But, um, Should we out him then? Should we say who he is? No, because he's very—he's a very private person. Oh. And he's still—I mean, he's still handsome. So I—you never know. It's always nice to have some backups. Okay. But um, yes. So Martin talked to us about what the Pokemon was and what the process was and what the event was. And was any of that interesting at all? He actually made it really interesting because he's such a good, funny character. You know, you've talked to him before. Um, I don't know. He makes me laugh so hard. He walked up to me the other day, just, and I was on, and he walked up and he was like, are you on? And I said, something's playing, why? And he said, I think I have a crush on the AT&T girl. And I said, let's, let's create an online campaign. We can make this happen. You know that cute little girl from the AT&T commercials? I don't. Well, uh, I was like, well, I actually got the T-Mobile girl to respond to me on Twitter because I was here for Halloween one year. So I was like, I let's let's start a campaign. Let's get the. Who's the T-Mobile girl? Like the, the, oh, the only one I know on the cell phone commercials is the one who's always in the smock. Oh no, that's insurance. Yeah, I was going to so say. So I was like, we get progressive. Yeah. Marge or whatever her name is. And I actually, oh, yeah. What's her name? Is it Marge? No, it's oh. something. No, no. Oh yeah, everybody's so excited to see you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello. Hello. Oh, okay, so do you want to watch the 99-year-old man together? No, I want to know more about who is this AT&T? Can we pull up a picture oh, of sure. her? Do I know who this person She's is? She's super cute. She is super cute? Mm-hmm. AT&T girl is what you search? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She Actually, is I do not like... Is that her? I do not like Yahoo search engine, so let's go. No offense. It's alleged. Whoa. That's not her, is it? Yeah, it is. I didn't... She doesn't look like that in those commercials. Oh, hey. Can we just see? So, oh, so this is the T-Mobile girl. This, oh yeah, you remember her? So I was. I do like her. I Where's she been? I are you gonna put her up for everybody? Or are we gonna watch our own? It's you more like everybody in on it. I, I mean, like I feel like it's special when it's just us. But fine, we can include. Well, no, everyone. but when we're talking about these things. Well, I forget. I'm glad see? you're here, here you because go. I forget. So this is the T-Mobile girl. I remember her. And she I, was super cute. And then she had a bunch, she had a good run, but I haven't seen her in forever. You know what? I bet she was a lot of money, and I bet they thought that's cheaper just oh, how to. How much money could she be? Well, what, I mean, like, what is she doing now? Nothing. Yeah, it can't be that much money. I need, oh, here she is. There she Although is. Although they do do well. The AT&T girl. You know, I used to do commercials when I was a little kid. Oh, my God. Yeah. Troy, you can't tell us these things. I did commercials. My mom was a model. My mom was a model. She was. She, I bet she was because you're so handsome. I bet you well, look like your Thank you. Mom. She was. Uh, she pimped me out when I was little to make money. And so, so I was in. This is the AT&T girl. She's cute. Oh, she is cute. Can't you see Martin with her? Yeah, she's kind of nerdy, like him. At least in that picture. But you showed me the other one. <laughs> the other picture, what she's really like. When you see her outside of the AT&T store. You're just like, hey, girl. <clears throat> no, but I did, a, I did a couple commercials. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you a quick story. So I did a commercial for Safeway, uh -huh. and um, Wait, there was so a fake Santa. I thought Safeway was only... West Coast. Oh. Yeah. Inside, this is in Sacramento, California. Okay. And so he had like this fake sleigh, and I was an elf. 
and I was all dressed up like an elf, and I had a speaking line. This is back when, in the 70s, and the commercials were just terrible. Oh, this is you great. Know, it was like we... early 70s. Did your mom not record it? No, no, record it. There's no VCRs in like 1971. Oh. I was like five years old. And uh, so I go running into the, the sleigh and I jump in the back of the sleigh and I think I said something like, Santa, can I have a pound of the jelly beans? <gasps> and you had that little voice too. Bang. Nailed it. Nailed it. But the commercial that I was most known for when I was five years old in Sacramento mm -hmm. was there was a uh, radio station that was all, um, it was either jazz or it was classical. It must have been classical. But they had me all dressed in a tux. I had to come in a tux. You had a little kid tux. I had a little kid tux. And I was a conductor. They had me walk up and go like tick, 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 and then start doing the thing. That was like the whole commercial. Oh, man. But my mom, who uh, was young back then anyway, but she didn't realize that they were going to take like a whole body shot. So I had this tux on, but she didn't rent me shoes. <gasps> and I had old beat up tennis shoes on. Well, that's almost cuter, right? So they ended up taking the full, they loved it. It took yeah. the whole thing. And then for years afterwards, I mean like until I was a teenager, there were billboards all around town of a cartoon of me in a, as a five-year-old in a tux with my tennis shoes on. <gasps> You know, that, that was like the, the signal of the station. Thing. So did, was it a cartoon because they didn't want to pay you to come in and take another picture? Or they didn't want to pay you for <laughs> no, the billboard no. campaign? I think the cartoon was just cuter than the real life or was easier to put. I don't know. Yeah, probably because they didn't want to pay me. Yeah, that's sad. But Dude, that's also... Cheap SOBs. <laughs> that's so cool. I wish you had pictures and stuff. I know. Well, th th things just weren't documented then like they are now. I know. That's the whole thing. It's like, you know... Now we're like, let me take a picture of my lasagna. Oh, every time my kid blinks, I've got it on camera. You know, but uh, but not us. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Nothing has lived. I should look it up on the, maybe somebody put it on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, because it's not, um, because a lot of times companies too will find that historic stuff and go, oh, this is cool, we'll upload it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, but back in those days, I mean, they probably didn't even, I wonder if they even shot it on videotape. It may have been shot on film, you know, and then who's going to archive it or right. where are we going to put it? But That's so cool. We didn't even know that you had this this Hollywood past. And then, uh, it could go to my childhood, fast forward till I'm in fourth grade, mm -hmm. and my stepdad at the time was working at uh, Cron as the weekend news anchor. He was also on know. 90210. He's, yes, he went to... He went to L.A. and was a news anchor there for a while and ended up on 90210, which I don't even remember. They must have just taken like a shot of him doing something. I just I saw it on IMDb. That. You didn't tell me. I told you. <clears throat> yeah. Well, no, I knew that he was there. But um, they had something called Kids Watch. Mm -hmm. And it was a kids news show. And I anchored that for like a year, six months or a year. You so had I was like a news anchor. Life. Right? Who knew Fourth how grade. cool you were? That wasn't very cool. But I do remember hanging out with a lot of those kids, and they were all like drama kids, and we all went to Marriott's together, like Marriott's Great American. I'm just like a normal kid, mm -hmm. and I'm with all these drama kids. Yeah. We gotta go on the Ferris wheel. I'm like, okay. <laughs> we have to update your Wikipedia page because none of your Wikipedia page says nothing about it. It's just like Emmy, 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 Hot Wife, Emmy. What, what, how can you improve on that? <laughs> that sounds pretty good to me. Well, you've got such a fascinating background. These are the things that we need to know. These are the special moments. It's interesting when you look back on your life and you see the road that you've traveled. And you don't always, you, I, you can never totally plan it out. But especially in those early days of your life, each of those little stops dropped something into you that made you what you became. You know? But did you realize when you were sitting there doing that News Kids program that one day you might actually do that as a grown-up and really enjoy it? It was the absolute last thing I ever wanted to do because my stepdad, and I feel, if you don't care, please let me know, but this is another personal story, he was always chasing a star. He was always trying to get to the next biggest job, and to him it was always about, uh, you know, I'm working weekends at Crom, but I want to be a weeknight anchor. So, I haven't even started this, but I mean, we'd, we'd been in New Orleans already and then came back to San Francisco. And, uh, oh, I want to be a weeknight anchor. Okay, well, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is hiring a weeknight anchor. So, in sixth so he grade. pack all of you guys up? Oh, yeah, they didn't blink an eye. So my, myself and my younger brother and my younger sister. And I got to the point where I knew the look on my mom's face when she walked into my bedroom, we were moving again. That's how many times we moved. But um, she came in and said, oh, we're going to Pittsburgh. And that was, you know, upheaval. I was in Pittsburgh for seventh and eighth grade. And then 
what he never realized, and I don't think he still to this day realizes that he, he does weekend news. I don't want to out the guy, but he does weekend news. And his, my, he and my mom have been divorced for about 20 years. But he uh, does weekend news in a medium-sized market. But this is a guy who was in L.A., Philadelphia, weeknight anchors. Weeknight anchor in Sacramento and San Diego. Um, you know, super successful guy, but always jumped around. And never learned that when you go for the biggest job, uh, most likely you're going to a station that's in trouble. There are very few stations that hire weeknight talent, weeknight anchors from outside of the market, successful stations. Um, this is a good example of this place here. Uh, when John became our primary anchor here, he was from inside. Mm -hmm. uh, if John wants to retire in 15 years or whatever, I'll be here. You know, and same thing with the morning. You, you promote from within. You have solid people who are ready to go and, and do what they do. And so he was always the guy who was hired by, I'm not going to name drop any of our competition, right. but say a weaker competition that would just grab somebody from out of the market and pull them in because they're looking for ratings. Yeah. And it doesn't work that way. It doesn't happen that you bring somebody in. I mean, every once in a while, but it's like going to Vegas and putting $100 on, on roulette on green. You know, there's two green slots and however many of the black and red slots. And I don't like Vegas. Yeah, it's a gamble. It's a big gamble. So I don't know how I got into this. But, oh, so you are anyway, a pistol tonight, says Lisa. Oh, yeah. So he, you know, pulled us all over the country. And so in the back of my mind, I thought to myself, I will never get into a business where I have to pull my family around so much. And it's so cutthroat in what they do and the way they fire people and the way they treat people. And I said, I'm, I'm never going to do that. So I'm in college and I... And I ended up going to Sacramento State University in, in Sacramento, and I could have gone other places. The reason I decided to stay in Sacramento was I'd finally lived somewhere for three years. It's the longest I'd ever lived anywhere. Oh, wow. From the time I was in fourth grade. That's so sad. That's not sad. It made me who I am. I'm telling you, it's like the road that you travel to where you are. You're pretty great. Well, thank you. That's really nice. But it did gave me some, it gave me some strengths, but it also screwed me up a little bit. So um, I end, I'm taking business courses because I thought, yeah, I want to do business. I've always what, enjoyed that. Did you have something specifically that you thought you might want to do? No, I wanted to do a business degree. I wanted to take a business degree and I've I'd always heard, as a matter of fact, a guy who worked with my stepdad, who I really respected a lot, a super smart guy, had told me, when you go to college, I recommend you getting a business degree because you can really do almost anything you want. And so um, I was a year into that and it was boring me to death. Tears. Yeah. And I ended up taking one of, one of the classes, uh, lower division was a business speech <clears throat> and I got up in front of the class and I forget what I did but it, it went over really well and I remember sitting, sitting there thinking well maybe I've got this mm -hmm. maybe this is a talent and it's something that I talk to my kids about a lot it's like um, you can have a dream and go for it and try to do that thing but sometimes your talents don't match up I think you can be equally as happy when you really find your talent and exploit that and go as far as you can with that because there's something to be said for doing something really, really well. Even if you don't like love it, but that's your real talent because you can be really successful and then enjoy the rest of your life. So I understand people who say, I want to, I have a dream to be this and I'll struggle and do whatever I can to be this one thing. But I also say, keep your eyes open and see what your talents are and then really go after that talent and exploit that and be the best you can be, follow your talent and you'll be successful. I feel like crying. <laughs> <laughs> no. So anyway, again, it's a long, so Troy Hayden's random story. Troy Hayden's telling me to leave right now, the no, building. But so so <laughs> I, I got into, um, I switched my major to communications, to media. It was called uh, broadcast news. That's what it was called. Cool. And so I switched into that. And um, and we've seen some throwback Thursdays of you, like in your college. Um, yeah, I anchored for the college station. Yeah. That was fun. And uh, actually, the first time I ever met my wife was through that because we went to the same journalism school in Sacramento. But it wasn't until you, so you met her there, but I thought you also saw her here. Well, here's the way that worked. Yeah. Now, we're, now we're skipping all over. Yeah. But so um, I'm at Sacramento State. And uh, my wife robbed the cradle. She's just a hair older than me. <laughs> but I think she was one or two years ahead of me in school. Because so, she's smart. Well, no, she's a little older. It's okay. So um, she was the star of Sacramento State's broadcast news upper division thing. So ev everybody who came into that program sat down and they watched a little video mm -hmm. that was done by the current news staff or whatever. And it was hosted by Stephanie Angelo, Ooh. the future Mrs. Hayden. Ooh. I remember going, 
looking at it and going, she's hot. <laughs> or something that we said. She's foxy. Whatever we said in oh, 1985. <laughs> and, uh, and a guy sitting next to me, his name was Guy. And he's like, she's a good friend of mine. He's like, that's Stephanie Angelo. I said, well, you've got to introduce me. So that was like a running joke between us all through school. Uh-huh. Where's, where's Stephanie? Where's Stephanie? When are you going to introduce me to Stephanie? Blah, 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 blah. So finally I graduate from college and I'm working up in Eureka, California. Oh my I'm, I'm doing uh, reporting and anchoring up there. And Stephanie got hired at the station in Sacramento doing like overnight cut ins type deal. And Guy invited me and said, hey, I'm having a Christmas party. And I'm like, dude, I'm in Eureka. He's like, Stephanie will be there. I'm oh like, all right, what day goodness. is it? So I drove all the way down from Eureka and that's where I met Stephanie. We, we met that first night and she was great. And uh, Oh, so you knew of her for a while before you I actually met her? I knew of her, yeah. And I was oh. following her career and I knew what she was doing. And oh then we gosh, met. We totally so hit creepy, it off. creepy sweet. And then, so, and that was it. I mean, I just, we hung out at the party. We had a really good time. I think we exchanged numbers. And then I go back up to Eureka. And that's pretty much it you know I'm thinking yeah. well that was great I, I met Stephanie and yeah. it was fun and she was super foxy and we hit it off and then uh, I'm I've been here for about a year and a half and then all of a sudden uh, one day I look over and my my boss's office had a big glass thing on it and I'm like that's Stephanie Angelo in there <gasps> she was in the boss's office I had no idea and was she applying for a job yeah she was here on an interview did you go in when she left and said, I, I can attest to the fact that that is a very skilled young lady that should be no. hired immediately? No. Oh, my boss, at that point in my career, I was like a little pup here. Not, I could never say that. But what I did say was, I said, um, there's an open desk right next to me if this works out. Yeah. If this works out, there's an open desk. I don't know if you knew, Tom. It's right <laughs> here, right next to me. But so that's what we got. I love it. And yeah. now, on your desk, you have pictures of Stephanie. I do. And my, my girls and the, the fruits of our uh, coupling. Ah, that's a really great show in the UK, by the way. Coupling. Fruits of our coupling? No, it's just oh. called coupling. And it's like Friends. I think Friends actually ripped them off. Oh, shocker. We do that a lot with yeah, the British. Yeah, we do. Uh, do you want to watch the story of this <clears> old guy? <throat> yeah. Are you over it now? I saved it for you. I played every single package. Go through some of these comments and see if there's any questions I have to answer. Because I hate do you have a pic- people. Do you have pictures of Bill on your desk? Bill? That's Clinton. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not answering those questions. Eureka. No, like- Yreka is different from Eureka. Yreka is actually way inland and, um, well, not way inland. I've probably asked an that hour question half, before, too. Though. Two hours, yeah. And then Eureka is on the coast. It was awful when I was there. To be honest, it was just, it was the economy, the timber economy, which had basically sustained it since the late 1800s, was totally dying. The, it was, uh, I don't know if all of you remember, but the spotted owl was a big controversy. It just got um, federally protected, and so they weren't allowed to cut down the trees that were left. Oh, wow. Nobody young who had anything going on wanted to be in Eureka. Because there there's just were. nothing going on. That's why you drove nine hours for a Christmas party. Well, and yeah, also, and then at the, the Stephanie thing I was telling you about was like way... I think that was way late when I was in Eureka, but no, it was early when I was in Eureka because then later on I, I started dating a woman in Sacramento and I would like go home to Sacramento all the time, you know, because there's nothing going on in yeah. Eureka. And it's like a five hour drive. So, um, yeah, different. But, you know, Humboldt State University is there, but, you know, it's kind of at the time. It, was, it wasn't happening. No. Not too much Foxy for you. No Foxy, no Foxy that I saw. Foxy with a beard. Ryan wants to know who put Red Bull in Troy's coffee maker. Am I fired up tonight? Ha la la, I appreciate hearing the backstory here. Yeah. Troy is very talkative tonight. We love Troy. Good. Troy. No, we're not going to do Bill Clinton tonight. You know what? If you want to see me do Bill Clinton, Gio Leo did the best <laughs> compilation. And oh, I, he absolutely now, did. at this point, I can't even do it anymore because that compilation is so good. Oh, no, not Twitter. Oh, it's on uh, YouTube. Go to YouTube. I'm trying to find it. I have to find it. Yeah, maybe that's what we should play. Forget the golfer. We should play Gio's Bill Clinton montage. No recent activity. Oh, there we go. Troy Clinton montage. Here it is, right there. Right here. No, no. Only 35 views. Geo, it's time for us to pump this up because this is like 
one of the funniest videos. I'm going to start it over. It encapsulates the Bill Clinton and our And our friendship. <clears throat> this is some of our greatest moments, our greatest hits. Preach. Wait, Good you singing, everybody. Is there now I'm outie. I'm going to have dinner. Preach. Wait, Good singing, everybody. Is there any justification for you doing the Clinton before you leave? No, there is not. Now, in my presidency, we did not have nuclear missile talks. <laughs> And he's out. He drops the mic and right there. Scene. I wish Alfredo, I could. Alfredo, I compliment you and your honesty. I would totally give it to <laughs> Troy Thumbs Up. What about Bill? I tell you what, when I go see a movie about dinosaurs, <laughs> it's got to be Jurassic World. No, um, it was great. So that's why I don't do it anymore. And I you did a million times. Here's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Phoenix. Great to see you. <laughs> Great to be in the Valley of the Sun. <laughs> I got this motorcycle jacket from your trash bin in college. <laughs> I had one like that. <laughs> I did. I had a black. But this is back I don't in the think, 80s. I don't think cool. you meant to sound like Bill Clinton right there. <laughs> I had that. I had, uh, one I like had that. that jacket. Let me tell you, Kenzie. I wore that jacket on my motorcycle. No, but I did. I would. I would go to um, favorite people. I showed you the geo pictures of you and Troy, or you and Bill. I'm getting you and Bill mixed up now. Oh, Kenzie, come on now. <laughs> I can't do that. I <laughs> am not Troy Hayden. You are. Everything else, really. At the, at the end of the day, it's, it's capitalism. the American way. It is the American way. You should uh, have done that in Bill Clinton voice. You missed an opportunity. It is the American way. Geo Leo is somewhere dying okay, right now. Good. <laughs> Right. Gio Leo, you There's are a such more? a good boyfriend. Look at Gio Leo's picture. Oh, Gio. <laughs> I knew you were my kind. We go to Legoland. Go oh. to Disneyland. The, the people who are There's more tied with us at 10 o'clock. Your hair looks good there. Read this comment right now. Gio. All right. They, they want Bill to do the ask. And I have asked Your hair looks so lot. good there. My hair does? A lot yeah. of people in my time. I have. Please watch the 10 o'clock news tonight. All right, you got it. There's your geo. That's going to get old. Everybody's going to be like, enough Clinton. Never. For God's sakes, Never. enough Clinton. I do pretty good in impersonations, but I can't think of one that can compete with that. There we go. That was beautiful. That was the Thank most you. beautiful thing. Thank you, Slow geo. Slow clap. Slow clap. Thanks for spending time with us tonight, Troy Hayden. Great seeing you guys.